Here fucking go. pumped. Water cooler. Water cooler. Water cooler. Yo. Yo. Welcome. Welcome to Water Cooler, episode number 277, also known as 69 plus 69 plus 69 plus 69. Plus one. Woo! <laughs> yeah. Oh, God, it feels good to hear you say those words. Yeah. We're still, it's still an uphill climb, gentlemen. No, don't you worry. Five banger, here we come. Yeah, you know how the show goes. I, Chris Locks, I'm on a kick with my Kroll Digital Buds. Philly style with me and Dave Gary Smith's here. I'm fucking pumped. Yeah, he is. Matt Fondelier's here. Hey, brother. Hey, Mike Dawson. What's up, dudes? What's up? And Kalen Bean. What's going on? Hey, Kalen. Hey. Just Switch like, it up there, Chris. Yeah, I just feel like I, I don't know. I just feel like I just saw Kalen. Yeah. Mm. What we did see each other? Oh, that's right. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Did you guys do I, an Easter egg hunt together? Ah, uh, you know what? I went over to Chris's house. Three ladies, yeah, whatever. Yeah, oh, yeah. Came over. Chris's house. Isn't that nice? You were invited. <laughs> Play a little croquet. Uh, well, I kind of invited myself, to be fair. <laughs> okay, but yeah, but, we uh, well, your family. Yeah, we, we, so you now welcome. you are yeah. allowed yeah, yeah, to do that. Right. We yeah. had a weekend. Yeah. We. Oh wait, what'd you say, Dos? I said your family. We are family, yeah. huh? Yeah, yeah. So you're allowed to just invite yourself to family. Because came at me with a conundrum today. <laughs> Sorry, man. Right. We got to do it. All right, all right. Dawson, do Dawson's the one that opened it up. So, <laughs> Kalen comes into my office when you guys are outside doing uh, your pre-production meeting, and and he's like, "What are you doing this weekend, Chris?" And I said, "And now my first thought is, okay, well, whatever. I like, Kalen has plans for my weekend. Right. <laughs> it's just basically right. when, when he asks that, it's like in my brain, it's like, okay, oh. yeah." Kalen has plans for my weekend, which I think is... So you <laughs> definitely said, I'm totally busy. It's free. <laughs> yeah, so I have no excuse. I'm not that quick on my feet. Mm. So, yeah, we know we do a podcast with you. Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> so so I say, you know, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm all opened up. I do have a dentist appointment on, on Friday, but other than that, yeah, I'm good. Now, and the correct it, answer would have been, I'm not sure what Jen has in store, but I'm free. <laughs> that will help you on both fronts. He's going to learn that the Kalen front I'm trying and to help the Jen front. I'm, trying I'm learning, to help him. Gary. I'm still, I'm still a young paddle. Gary's a quick study. Gary got all this shit down in a real short amount of time. Like maybe it took like six, seven months. Yeah, yeah. We I'm don't make our mistakes, but yeah. I appreciate the compliment. Well, as, as I kind of said earlier, as I alluded to, you're allowed to make a mistake once. Yeah, I'm uh, well, I said I said apologies, but, apologies work once. Work once. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'm still figuring it out. But anyway, Kalen just goes, "Hey, what are you up to?" I said, "I don't know. I don't really have anything planned." And he goes, "Oh, well, uh, my birthday weekend." Right? Just keep coming. It's just like, oh, all right. Noted. 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 <laughs> noted. He's locking you in before he even tells you. He was already locked what's going to go be down. Fair. And <laughs> when you said nothing, I had him. <laughs> and then. uh and then Kevin goes, and uh, I'm thinking of, you know, we were talking about Frisbee golf. Yeah. I think it'd be kind of fun if we went Frisbee golf. You know, my brothers are gone. But then what if my brother good. can't make it? So I'm trying to figure out, and uh, and Amy, my last Amy's name on there. Did you mind? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. <laughs> she's like, Just give her a nickname. She's like, yeah, great. You know, invite, invite the friends. <laughs> and uh, I'm not doing that. And he's like, okay, so he's like, yeah, like definitely want to invite the guys, but like, and, and you know, you and Jen, your family, uh, but I want to invite the other guys too because we were just talking about frisbee golf, but then Amy got a little weirded out, not not because just like now it's a lot more people than just one guy, and we have to figure out the food and we have to figure out, um, you know, the big group and everything. We're not all fully vaccinated, blah blah blah. Like, I mean, she, I don't know exactly what she said, but it was kind of long, say- yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you're like, a little bit. I fellish a little bit. <laughs> Editorializing. Yeah. yeah, I feel like we weren't outside for that long, but this is a really long story so yeah. far. But anyway, so now Kalen's like, so I don't know what to do. And I said, you know, just tell the guys. They would totally understand that, look, I'd love for you to have you guys there. But due to what's going on and, and you know, having to figure out the food, it's just a lot more people than we imagined, and you guys live far away. So fuck off. Yeah, yeah basically. And I was like, no. These guys are understanding, Kalen. And he's like, no. Yeah. And Kalen's like, no. They're not. They're going to cry like little babies. That's what I said. And I... Yeah. <laughs> it sounds exactly like I didn't want you guys to cry. Is this this coming up weekend or last weekend? No, that'd be no, this that'd weekend. Be this weekend. Oh, okay. Kalen's birthday's on Sunday. Happy yeah. birthday. Thank you. Oh, this coming weekend. So then... And Kalen's like, okay, I'm going to tell the guys. We shouldn't do it on air. And I'm like, 
Agreed. <laughs> <laughs> I said, and I said, copy that. Ten four. Agreed. And here we are. <laughs> and here we are. Is your birthday Sunday? It's on Sunday, and this would be on Saturday. Oh, that would be on Saturday. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Well, I could technically make it. But I guess. <laughs> wow. I was going to go a whole different way, Kaylin. <laughs> I'm not invited. No, I would not be butthurt at all. I would totally understand. Six yeah. months from now would be a different conversation, but right now, of course. See, this is great. I'm in the third group. I wish I didn't know about it. <laughs> <laughs> well, there we go. That's we a wide like... range right there. Yeah. 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 See, that's that's the beauty of this show. We cover <laughs> the entire gamut here. I'm not driving to Long Beach. Yeah. So, okay. Oh, cool. That's okay. what I figured, and no. I was gonna go talk to you about it, but no. The, well, there were more people out there than than just you three. Yeah. But uh, we, to if be we fair, get the speakers a... are on, so they're. Gonna be here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm into uh, I'm into a little frisbee golf game out here in well, the we, valley. We were talking about frisbee golf, and I was like, oh, that yeah. seems like an easy, fun. Like, There's thing courses to do. out here. We should go hit one and play, mm. and then we can say it's Kalen's birthday. Ooh, remote frisbee golf. Ooh, yeah. Some Zoom frisbee golf. We could lav up. Do a live and show. And we, we could bring the Zoom 6. It yeah, could be done. Not it. Yeah, not it as well. <laughs> but it could be done. I mean, I, I think that'd be fun, maybe for a Patreon. Yeah. Yeah, probably not. Too much work. It's a lot of work. Is that two of them? It was just one. No, it was okay. just one. It sounded like two snaps. Should be noted, it's a, a brand new flavor of White Claw that oh, I've never yeah. had before. What is it? This is strawberry. Strawberry Claw. Yep. Take I'm also sip. drinking a new flavor. Which, we, which flavor is that? Blackberry. Dawson? I am also drinking a new flavor. Beer. Are those? <laughs> Dawson's pineapple. Uh, no, uh, pineapple. Is true. Are those it's, new it's flavors? It's actually probably the least offensive of ever. This, this, this pineapple is pretty good. They I are like new this. flavors, Chris. I, they just made a new variety pack that I includes know, mango as the fourth flavor. I know they made the V3 now, which That's is... what this is. Yeah, yeah. which has... I, th- I just thought there was a new combo of flavors. I didn't know they were new flavors, period. The strawberry, I, I believe, is new. And the pineapple they've made before, but the like lower calorie, like you know, the 70-calorie version, mm-hmm. this is different because this is a 5%. Oh, see, look at that. New claws for everybody. New Amazing. claws. And thumbs up. Is this the because we predicted this would be the best variety pack out there? So far, I'm enjoying it massively. Are you enjoying the strawberry? Yeah, I like it. Okay, I, I agree. The blackberry is great. Strawberry is good. Pineapple, how do you feel? Fantastic. There you go. Great to hear. How's your coffee, Kalen? It's really good. Hey, really coffee good buds, coffee. right here. Yeah, yeah. Look at you. Cheers, yeah. guys. Yeah, coffee and frisbee golf, right here. Look at you guys with your no <laughs> alcohol problems. Just over here drinking coffee and offending the co-host. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever, dude. All right. Well, we do have a lot of show today. Because we got a lot of Shay today. Yeah. Uh, right before the show, Matt warned that Gary and myself that today's Shay Fondelay is going to be a little longer than nice. usual. <laughs> I'll do my best to make it even longer. It. Yeah. Oh, great. Yeah, Dawson, Dawson will uh, try to extend it as much as he can. And I'll then uh, editorialize. <laughs> I like that. Yeah. I went to San Diego this weekend. Sweet. I Did you take the train? No, I didn't. It was too expensive. You should take the train. Spent that See, money. I'm on digging dinner. in early, dude. I'm getting there. <laughs> getting my reps. Yeah, in. look at it. He, he's already opening up a lot of different angles. I can't yeah. wait. You're so good at the this. Surfliner, bro. You got to get a <laughs> surfliner, bar car, all the way. I'm never going to get through this, am I? <laughs> and uh, if you're all quick, means, man. Get up for if you're people. quick, you can jump <laughs> off right. in in, uh, in Carlsbad, smoke a quick cigarette, and then jump back I'll on. Hop right back on again. Yeah. Really? It's how how much of a break do you get in Carlsbad? It's a quick cigarette. It's a quick cigarette. Quick cig. Dude, I can, seconds. I can, anytime when I was on the radio in San Diego, uh, if I had a song above five minutes and 45 seconds, because we everything was on CD, I could run downstairs, blow a fag, and run back up and that's really easily. <laughs> what radio would let you play five minute and 40 second songs? No, oh, dude. I thought Stairway radio- to Heaven's like 720. I know, but I always thought like, the whole rock. thing with radios, you got to play. The radio that, edit. In that, parentheses. Radio edit. that only exists for maybe like a K-Rock or a rock radio, but when you're working classic rock, I see. these songs are established. They let you, you there. play it all out. Okay. Yeah. I, I, I ordered a burrito once, wow, and then I drop. left the radio station, <laughs> and I drove to pick up my burrito, <laughs> Oh, there I drove it is. back, <laughs> brought it back, and I ran back <laughs> upstairs, God. and Stairway to Heaven still had like 50 seconds left. Oh. Amazing. Yeah, That's I don't great. like it when they cut out parts <laughs> of the songs for for radio airplay. Me neither. That's how the artist wanted it. That's right. I want that bridge in there. In there, yeah. <clears throat> they do it for karaoke songs too. 
I was oh, devastated yeah. singing Sammy Charmed Life to find that they cut the bridge. That was the best part of the goddamn song. Really? Oh. Yeah. But it's also like a seven minute song if you play the whole thing. So it's, I kind of get it. There's a lot of lyrics to that song, too. Yeah. I Somebody, I had a gig this weekend. Somebody requested that song. Really? You should learn it. It's a great song. I, I know how to play it. Would, it. it would I don't be know a the crowd lyrics. pleaser. They would like it. I don't know all the lyrics. And yeah, so they, well, first, the first request I got was Do you know any Hootie and the Blowfish? Uh, yes, sir. You have I to do. learn some of that. I don't want to. You have to. If you're going to play covers, if you're going to do that backup thing. See, I don't do that thing, so I don't have to learn Hootie and the Blowfish. But you (laughs) are doing that solo acoustic (laughs) thing. You need a repertoire of songs. Got to learn some Hootie, bro. I already have about about a three and a half hour set. Sure. Maybe yeah. four. I With could stretch no it out hoodie. to four. Well, but Chris, and how does... no semi charmed kind of life, <laughs> baby, baby. I would actually learn semi charmed life. You're leaving my, them wanting something else. My Chris. genre, and that's the kind of like why people actually what people find appealing about when I play is I don't really I don't really stick to a particular genre. Hmm. Well, Chris, I have a legitimate question here. In, in the world of Venmo donations, how do you control if people can just request anything and they've already Venmoed you five bucks? How do you? How does that work? Oh, I, I, it's just there for the, the tips. I'm it's, not, it's I'm not paid, really, really, really yeah. taking requests. Okay. All, all gig receipts to, for people, they're, they're paid you know, after the fact. Or, you know, nobody on stage has their thing in their hand to go, okay, you just gave me five bucks, I'll play that song. Yeah. It's the, it's the guilt factor. Like, will you tip me Venmo? I'll play it for you. And then you play it, and then they tip you. All right, Doss. So what are – okay, let's say I did entertain this idea of needing to learn requests. What are the five requests that I would need to know that you think would be – or give me like three of them or something. I'm just going to jump in here. The first five tracks of Broken Rear View Mirror by Hootie and the Blowfish. <laughs> <laughs> You're not going to find a stronger set of five Hootie songs. Hootie and the Blowfish? I've never had that request. And you uh, you want to know a song I do play? I play uh, Teenage Dirtbag by Weedus. Do you so remember no that song? I request that. You would be surprised. <laughs> no I've, even I've knows actually that had song. it. No. And Dawson. And uh, you said Weezer wrong. I, <laughs> I actually play, we- I do Weezer and Weedus block. <laughs> I'm not kidding. Well, that's uh, clever. That's just clever. Yeah. And, uh, and everybody, of all the songs, and I play some sing alongs, everyone is. Top of their lungs singing Weedus. And I even in the middle of the song went like, some bet, if I had to bet money on what song everybody but would be singing tonight, it would not have been this one. But mm. for some reason, that one, that's the one that caught. I guess Over I don't even again. know what song it is. Because I'm just a teenage Wait. dirtbag, okay. baby. So I don't know. Uh, uh, yeah, okay, yeah. Song. Good, it was, it was, it was uh, in that song, or in that movie Loser with Jason Biggs and Mina Suvari. Sure. It was like that anthem for, or the, whatever. Anyway, well, random. Hmm. Random. But I, my genre is I only want to play songs I like yeah. and that I listen to. So what I don't do you want... got against Hootie and the Blowfish, man? I just don't listen to them that much. Well, Chris, if it helps sway you at all, we have friends who are I notorious. I don't listen to them that much either, but, but hold my hands a great song. <laughs> yeah. All right, look. It's, it, but it's what I like. It's, it, I'm bringing you guys into my universe mm-hmm. kind of thing. She sing them how about him. Okay. Oh, now I have to do that one. <laughs> it would give you an opportunity to show off another incredible impression. Oh yeah. You well, know, I don't. People will see that you're just multifaceted. You're so yep. talented. You know, I play more money, more problems, right, man? I'm very aware, Gary. You know that? Yes, it's terrifying. And uh, the third verse comes in, and it's notorious B.I.G. Oh, you drop it down. Well, you know, I, I. My my signature thing is I would go straight in my biggie voice, and, right? And I would go pretty hard. Yeah. You do a good biggie voice. Um, Mikey, my drummer, you guys know Mikey. Sure do. He was in the audience. Who? Uh, oh. And that's brutal. Yeah. He knows. <laughs> but he's Mikey. like a slow tear rolls down his face. <laughs> no. Mikey just <laughs> listening with his iPod and one earbud. You guys know Mikey. Of course we know Mikey. We've spent probably a total of 22 days at sea with Mikey. Mike. Of course we know Mikey. We, we got fast enough for him to lower that gun from his head, right? <laughs> okay. um, so safe. So I'm I'm getting into the third verse of Mo Money More Problems, and there's a lot of stuff socially that's going on. Mm. What are you talking about? And you know, with with the, with the race and stuff, and and <coughs> there's a race? politically mm-hmm. there's and politically correct. So third verse. So third verse is going in, and Track I, I, and I inhale for my big impression, <gasps> and then Mike just looks at me, 
And he like does a left look left right and then looks at me and goes and does the <laughs> do not do it and I just rip cord and went straight to my regular voice and I haven't done Biggie since mm. okay yeah he just says, I, I don't think it's right and Jen kind of agreed like no, yeah maybe that's we okay. pump the brakes on sure. that sure now that's a fun now you should do some hootie I should do some hootie yeah I'll, I'll be, and then uh, I got well, I actually, whatever you do don't sing it like hootie. Don't sing it like Darius Rucker, because then, you know, you got to be fair across the board if you can't do a Biggie voice. I don't know who that is. You can't do the Darius Rucker voice. <laughs> I sing it alone no. by ourselves. You'd be the so second I'll person you, you can't can do, do it. Biggie. <laughs> <laughs> Shit, Matt, sorry. Um, anyway, oh, and then our, people are requesting R. Kelly again. Nice. Yeah. Play yeah. that shit, dude. You can't do it anymore. You can't do that. And actually, do not play some... Or an R. Kelly song, but whatever. Whatever. It was it was a fun weekend. I'm actually playing there again. It's called Marina Wine Bar in Long Beach, April 23rd and 24th. Be Friday, there. Saturday, seven to ten p.m. Chris will Great. learn patience by Guns and Roses. We will not be taking requests <laughs> <laughs> unless I know, of course. I, I for some reason I always entertain the idea. Like, hey, do you take a request? Uh, not really. But what do you got? And then it it's just like something crazy, and I'm like, oh no, sorry, I don't know why I even entertain that idea. I don't know how to play that. Is what you got to do in your next show is you know silence everybody, get everybody's attention, and then say, "This is for all the ladies out there." This what? is my Rush medley. What is what's your killer cover song? <laughs> we'll start Josh? it off with Twenty One Twelve. What's your banger cover? Uh Sinead O'Connor's "Nothing Compares to You." Really? That's that's my that's I would my love to hear that. That's my kick ass cover. All right, noted. I rock that shit, yo. And then patience. I do patience. See. I, I just sent, I just sent them to you. Sent all these people getting pressing covers. All right, let's get into some comments. We got a lot of show today. I um I was setting up the my, my laptop and Kim thought I was screen hacking. I was looking at his computer because he had all his flicking notes on there. Mm. He got a little nervous and he just shot, shot his, his laptop. Yeah. Like I'm yeah, yeah. I don't want to preview his score. No cheating. That's what I said. Yeah. So here we <laughs> here we go. Some listener. Clements. Aye, aye. These are listener comments and clam. Nope, nope, nope. <laughs> Don't do that. Uh, th- these are all from our Facebook group, and uh, if anybody wants to join, the, the Facebook group is growing really nicely, and uh, it's. I'm not it's probably getting because of the ease to join. Yeah, the ease to join. Yeah, what is it again? What's the URL? Facebook Lord knows it ain't what they're getting out of it. <laughs> Facebook.com slash groups slash Bobo Boy Army Worldwide LLC. Answer a few questions and you're in. How easy is that? So super easy. That's as easy as it gets. Um, and this is not just the five of us. There this is a community of Bobo boys and girls across the country. It's a bromunity. Across the world. What am I saying? And we've all got bromunity. There are literally dozens of us. And it's I, I'm not <laughs> kidding. It's probably my favorite place on the internet. Is that favorite? Currently is for me, yeah. Mine's yeah. Too. I still like porn. Uh, that's true. It's my second sure. favorite place on the internet. Oh, yeah. No, we didn't even think about that. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. It's definitely my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> See, Chris, did you take notes? <laughs> that was what you're supposed to do. Oh. <laughs> you're welcome. All right. So let's get into some of these comments here. Stephanie Lynn Rinker made a post. Yep. She said, uh, regarding our last episode, that was the best four banger of my life. Yeah. I like her. All right. You're welcome. Look at that. We did it. We finally yeah. satisfied a woman. <laughs> <laughs> what we did it as a group. I love yeah. you guys. Yeah, you know team what, that's a show. When you're right, you're right. Let's get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Bravo, Matt. I surrender. <sighs> Well, well, Matt, we're going to bring you back down our earth here because Jeff Richardson, he took a candid pic of a random dude. And he just went and said, from the Matt Fondelier School of Fashion, sweater, jeans, and flip flops. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah. Now, you know, be, only because Adam will never hear this show, and I'm sure you're going to tweet Adam fine. I'll take that risk. Jeans and sandals, totally fine in my book. If you're going, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it, it, it is okay if you got to be a little bit more formal, but you should always, always have trunks underneath those jeans. So that you're ready to jump in the ocean if you find that spot. Thank you. That's go. that's my rule. Yeah. yeah, if you randomly find an ocean, yeah. you're ready. Jeans are just leg coverings for board shorts. It's often if you're wearing flip flops. <laughs> that's all they are. Matt, I thought that the peak of the episode was going to be your. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> then we got that jump. <clears throat> Dawson just breaks down breaks down fashion. I think it's I call it California casual. I agree. Mm-hmm. You know, 
So, all right. I disagree. Actually, man, no. They, they, I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. The best look, on best rich dude low-key look that anyone can pull off. Jeans, flip-flops, and a white collared shirt buttoned down, sleeves rolled up. Mm, you're right. Until, that's that's until summer party gear. Up. That's standard summer party gear 101. Yep. Are they going to a wedding? Are they finishing you a business deal? You don't know. Deal? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you, you don't know. Yeah. Were you just at a wedding on the beach? That's true. And or again, you just do you got board the, shorts on under there? The key yeah. was rolling up. If it, if the sleeves were down, it would just look yeah, like a down. waiter or something. Yeah. You yeah. Know, like someone off shift from work. But because the sleeves are up rolled a little up, bit, huh? you know they're here to play. Yeah. Oh, where is your yacht, sir? That's right. No, it was funny, dude. A long time ago, I was the alternate on um, <clears throat> on a, a, a yachting team in Santa Barbara. Which meant that all I got to do was party on the boat and never really had to race until the day I did. That's another story. But um, some chick asked the skipper of the boat, um, why do you wear button-down shirts on the boat? Isn't it hot out here for sleeves? And he's like, the air blows through these. I'm a lot cooler than you guys in T-shirts are. So a button-down shirt in the summer in the heat, it's it's yeah. really a game changer, especially if there's a breeze. They have front it's vents. Nice. It's nice. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You stay cool in those. Yeah, I, I don't see anything wrong with that. And you can roll down your sleeves if you don't have sunscreen and not burn your arms. Yeah. I, uh, you can I, pop your collar and cover your neck. So many benefits. So many benefits, yeah. dude. I got to stop wearing this Jurassic Park shirt. Yeah, yeah Matt. You're, I'm one fucking button up away from yeah. being viewed as a millionaire. Dawson's basically asking you to commit. Yeah. All right. You're just, you're half in right now with the jeans Matt and flip flops. Matt currently is wearing the uniform, and I like that. The uniform. Jeans, black shirt. Flip-flops. He went flip flops. I'm flip-flops. okay with the flip flops. I don't have a problem with the flip flops. The only problem with the flip flops on the air again today. is if you are, <laughs> if you're called to do some kind of job. Your feet are going to be in danger. Mm. That's the only thing. Is yeah, that a sure. risk you're constantly so, willing to take, Matt? Every, 335 days of the year, yeah. 335 <laughs> days. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I it just never caught on with me. So yeah, I don't. Uh, so I guess I'll be on the on the other side of that of that hill. What about you, Kalen? Jeans and flip flops. Where do you stand? I don't like flip flops. So. For other people, sure, go ahead. Live your life. Thing, yeah. Live your life. Have fun. Yeah. Me, I don't wear flip flops. Sure. There they you go. Frustrate me. There you go. Why do they frustrate you, Kalen? Because I always feel like they're gonna fall off. <laughs> so I feel like I gotta hold on with my toes, and then I'm working <laughs> to wear these things. It's just a hassle. If you get a pair of flip flops that are actually built for wow. size, they'll be easier to walk in. Ironically, people wear flip flops to be less less anxious right? about things. Yeah. But I, I realize I it they increases your anxiety until I put them on. Now, if I was at a theme park, like at Magic Mountain, I would feel the same way. I would not want to wear flip-flops there because that shit's going to come flying off my feet. Yeah, yeah but you're, you're, you're only at work. I'm not planning on going you're faster at work. than you're like not, one mile an hour. You're not at Bonnaroo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You're just at work, so flip-flops are cool. Sure. Yeah. No, they're not. <laughs> I also like that this, these conversations are being had as if this is a new thing that I've just decided yeah. this yeah. year to try out. I've worked in this building for more than a decade of my life. Yeah. This conversation does feel familiar. Yeah. yeah it has probably know, just, come up a few times. We, we must address it still. All right. Brittany Moiron, she shared her first post in the group, and she was just try- letting me know that a company just acquired the venue that – I potentially had lost when the guy skipped town, the wedding venue. Now, did anyone else in this room text this information to Chris no. when they saw it? No. Matt was out of no. town, so I gave Did you, you see it, Cam? I did not. Yeah. Okay. okay, Matt, well, did you see it? I was out of town. He was out of town. I saw it. I and saw that somebody sent it to Chris. Yeah, he well, was I didn't tagged see any, right away. Yeah. I didn't need to see, feel any need to send it to Chris yeah. as well. I don't know. I didn't feel like Chris would necessarily see a Facebook alert. I have mine turned mm. off. Yeah, I don't actually don't have mine turned on either. So I thought about so Gary's 40, being a good friend. I thought about forty minutes after it posted, and I went, "Chris definitely knows this, but I'm gonna send it to him anyways." Good. That's. Oh, watch yourself! It's the call. I think that's awesome. Did it help you? No. Okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I asked no, this morning. He was like, "Oh, I definitely knew." He was right. thankful. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so I mean, uh, thanks, Brittany. We're looking into it. We heard uh, Lucci Loft or Loose Loft is a great company. So L U C E yeah loose loose, all right fast and loose loft la loose means the lights but, uh, in Italian there you go, but thank you very much Stephanie Blaine, 
She says, Happy Eastern Passover. Wanted to share some very pro-puppy artwork I've been working on. It's the entire Bobo Boy army as dogs. Hope everyone enjoys hashtag, hashtag wolf wolf. And now if you go to the Facebook group, uh, it's actually the the cover photo for yeah, the group. It's amazing. And it's cool. Very oh, it's cute. Great. Well, it's really, it's, it's, it's only easy to figure out who I am as a dog because that dog is smoking a cigarette. <laughs> yeah. Pretty big hint. I can't tell who everybody else is. Really? Oh, it's pretty easy. And well, I couldn't get it that big on it. my phone. Okay, That's a big I, let me yeah. let me describe them to you because I, yeah, they are kind Here. of hard to figure Show out. Me. Look at them. Show them to right Kayla. There. There's Ross. one dog that is has a can of beans. Oh, okay. So we're going to say that's Kalen. Okay, there you go. Well, the jury's still I didn't out. see that. Can we go through the others before we lock them in? <laughs> yeah, seriously. There is one dog that has a uh, chunk yeah, nibbles yeah, and an yeah. apple. Well, that's Kalen. Yeah, that an apple laptop. Be, he loves sweets. So. Yeah, which one is Kalen? <laughs> There's one uh, dog with glasses and a, and a dog bowl. And a, He's the only one that gets to eat. <laughs> one that gets to eat. Andy has a, a bib that says Shea Fondelier bandana. Well, that sounds Shea. like Kalen. Oh, Chris yeah. has a dog bowl, too. And these dog bowls are white claw dog bowls, by the way. Are they really? I don't think I noticed that. Yeah. Oh my god! No, the detail work here is just yeah. amazing. Chris awesome. gets the microphone. I get the uh, yeah. I assume, and I me. get the cigarette. <laughs> are we gonna? But just... you get the music bandana too. Yeah, you have a music bandana. Are, are we just gonna gloss over the fact that Chris is clearly the smallest of all the dogs? I was gonna say that. <laughs> I love but it. But then Dawson would start talking about him, and I just I just rolled with it, <laughs> Gary. But I'm glad that you decided to <laughs> pump the brakes, turn the car around, and and revisit that. It's important that we knew what each dog looked like. I love it. I know I'm talking shit about it, but I love it. Thank you. I really. Love it's it. amazing. Yeah. Are you kidding me? It's really cool. Thank you, Stephanie. Very talented. All right. Connor McCaw. He created a poll. He says, I'm not much of a gambler, but what are your favorite gambling vice or what's your favorite gambling vice for entertainment? I bought a few lotto tickets after winning a few dollars on a video poker machine and, uh, at the bar after the Gonzaga win. Consider it, a, consider it a donation to the schools for the kids, you know. But so this is the order from uh, best to worst. Sports betting, everyone's really into in, in the group. Then next is poker. Next is dealer blackjack. After that, stock market. And then after that... Uh, <laughs> stock market. Yeah. After that, it doesn't matter. They, they say it doesn't matter. They never have money because they always lose anyway. So. <laughs> That's uh, a great poll. Yeah, what do you, what do you guys What do you guys think? What is, what's your favorite I'm, way to lose money or gamble? Yeah, for me, it's definitely blackjack. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Whenever I'm in Las Vegas, which unfortunately never happens anymore, or when we go on the cruises, I'm not going to be at the table for hours and hours, you know, day after day. But the 90 minutes or so that I'm sitting there, and uh, especially like in Vegas when they're just giving you the free drinks and stuff, I guess on a cruise you just walk around with your drink pass anyway. I love that. That's like a one of the more satisfying 90 minute experiences whether yeah. or not you lose the money i usually end up just kind of breaking even and being like all right well that was there really really fun i'm done yeah thanks for my drink yeah i may do that again a couple times throughout the weekend or something and i it's always satisfying yeah it reminds me gary and i were doing a ace on the house show i'm sure we've told a, the story before in in vegas for like one night only not even a night one day only one we day only flew in at 10 and left at seven and there was like a corporate event happening for the client for about two hours and it was in this huge you know dance hall kind of area and gary and i were like let's dance and then we <laughs> left and then we played blackjack and it was awesome i i i, uh, I was thinking about blackjack i actually played pretty recently i went to palm springs a couple weekends ago mm-hmm. and they have the agua caliente casino and uh jen's brother and jen and uh her sister in law really wanted to go. I'm like, let's go. That sounds like fun. And wanted to, I wanted to see what it was like because I went to Reno and it, I mean the casinos were pretty on in Reno. And they're like, okay, let's go see what's like out in California. Went and uh, yeah, I mean it, it's like you can't you couldn't even really tell. Some of the places had like I, oh no, they didn't have any plastic dividers or anything like that for mm-hmm. for the tables. But we played blackjack and I lost. And I realized I am I'm my preferred method of gambling is craps and poker and i can i can say that between both of them i am uh in my career i'm up like uh, that's awesome yeah it's awesome but i'm so far down in blackjack that i'm probably down overall or maybe i'm broke i've broken even just because i I can't win in blackjack i don't know how i just Mm. don't get it like i know basic strategy but i don't know how to work the bets or anything like that sure i love blackjack 
I think overall I'm up on the blackjack tables in nice. my life. Um, one time Is that was, your preferred method of gambling, though, based on that poll? Uh, I enjoy playing blackjack the most. But what I do is I go to hit the roulette table oh, and the craps table. I love roulette. Um, and craps is okay, but those are the two good money makers. What's your number in roulette? Uh, it varies. Okay. I don't I don't play numbers, but I play a lot of corners. And, you know, sometimes you just fucking get lucky and you got to stack on the number and then you got four corners covered. And you're re- – you like – in in roulette, you can go from like a hundred bucks to fucking two thousand bucks, three thousand, five thousand, like just like fucking that. It's Damn. amazing. Um, and then you go to the blackjack table, and you play a fun <sighs> skill game where you can get delivered beers. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't like. I also so the don't idea like- of gambling is you sit, play cards, and they bring you beer. You play blackjack, Kalen? No, I don't. Whenever I have, I always lose. Yeah, I lose too. And I hate the idea that what I do affects everyone else. Oh, I always immediately, I grab the table where I can sit third base, where I can control the game. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> yeah. That, that uh, actually makes and sense. And if, if I see a table where some single person has, has taken one seat and he has sat in third base... Okay, that guy knows. He wants to control the table. He knows the rules. He's you not going to fuck us. You want somebody who wants the ball Yeah, to sit there. Yeah. yeah. So I will always join that table. Why is um, third base the one that controls the game? They get the first they get the, they're the dealt. No, they're the last. He, he wants they're to the, the last person oh, oh, oh. who. Third base like in a baseball field. It's on the very end of So like, say the, the dealer <laughs> is, is showing 16 or he's showing a 6. Right. And a couple of people have stayed on 17. Some guy stayed on 12. Going, dealer's going to bust, me. dude. That dealer's was me. Gonna bust. That sure. was me. You stayed on 12. You want, every, you want everybody to just, okay, fucking hold it. Show us your 10. Flip over that next face card. Sweet. Everybody wins. So everybody already knows what their hand is at that point in the game. Therefore, you get to devastate Yeah, we're all playing face up. <laughs> I'm just wondering. Because yeah. you sit at the front and you do a bad hit. You impact the entire table as well, but they don't know what they have yet. So now I see why it's more painful to then be the one who fucks every, up for everybody at the end. Yeah. I get it. Yeah, I don't like it. Yeah. I well, the, the, go- the guy at the top, the guy who is playing first, if he wants to take a car, if he wants to hit on 14, and nobody really cares that much. Sure. You're the first guy up. Because they don't know what they're, what they're going to end up with anyway. As Matt, as Matt has established, Blackjack's definitely one of my favorites, but I would say tied in recent years is video poker, which this gentleman mentioned. Wow. Because it's not because I'm, like, taking it seriously or anything, but if I want to go sit at a bar and have a free drink in Vegas, you throw 20 bucks into that video machine, you can pretty much keep that 20 bucks running as long as you want. Yeah. Unless you're crazy. Yeah, that's, that's totally true. Though, there's some, like, video poker lifers who just, like... Oh, yeah. They just sit there. They know every bartender that goes through this because they just sit at the bar and they just get free drinks. Because if you play, then you just you you, you get drinks the entire time. And time. they are fascinating. Yeah, I love it. I love that culture. <laughs> well, now's a good time to tell you guys who are listening that you should sign up for the Patreon show because I do a little segment called "Shit I Did as a Kid." And on Wednesday, I'm going to tell you about a little gambling that we did with our friends and the circumstances that surround it. On a game of goalpost. Now, how would one, you know what goalpost is, I'll tell you. How would one subscribe to that, Dawson? You got to go to patreon.com slash watercooler. So clean. Oh, it's so nice. All right, Gage Hamilton, he wrote in. He just wrote three words. Water cooler dating app? <laughs> Question mark? <laughs> uh, <laughs> if you want to date dudes. That's the- <laughs> <laughs> Look, we, Listen, we, we have we plenty don't of female posters out there. Respect all women, Look, right? <laughs> already I've read a post from Stephanie, Brittany, and a different Stephanie. Two Stephanies. Two Stephanies. We already have girls with the same line. name. That's our tagline. Water cooler dating app. We got two Stephanies. <laughs> <laughs> I was not in. Now I'm sort of in. <laughs> Uh, I'd love that. I'd just be nervous if, like, actually two of our listeners did go on a date and it didn't work out. I'd, I would feel bad. Yeah. Like, that would actually affect affect me, and I don't want to affect me. Uh, Josiah Mangus, 
He says, I know there's been a, a lot of controversy between waffles, French toast, and pancakes here at the cooler. But I'm here to say, don't sleep on the sourdough French toast waffles. <laughs> All right. <laughs> well, now you're not playing fair. If, if your team French toast, this is how we do French toast. And he put up a picture, and these things look delicious. They oh, look amazing. Man. Yeah, so I will not, I would never sleep on something like that. That sounds incredible. Yeah, it's like way too small to sleep on anyway. But new, do sleep on the new Posture Predic mattress. <laughs> All right, a couple more here. Let's see. Oh. Here we go. <laughs> Tim Osink, he created a poll. He said, which is more disgusting? And he gave a couple of uh, options there. Whoa. Uh, Nashville hot chicken sharts is number one. <laughs> by, by what, like, a landslide. A landslide. A landslide. <laughs> trying not to use the word a landslide. <laughs> by a lot. It evokes, a lot. A lot. By, well, I think it's the visuals that are evoked by a landslide. <laughs> And then next is – so Nash, right now, Nashville Hot Chicken is at 45. And then second place is Burps at 5. <laughs> <laughs> Farts at 4. And then Bobby Lee. <laughs> Which is weird. Yeah, weird one. Uh, but thanks, Tim. Appreciate that one. I regret telling this story. No, I don't. Dewey Smith, he says, uh, I'm just southeast of Portland. And I helped a couple of young people, including a nice Asian lady, probably in her late 40s or early 50s, pump her gas because she never had done it. She was so sweet and thankful for the help. But back in nine, in the 90s, when I was in Wyoming, a lady came in and berated us for not coming out to pump her gas. She was from Oregon. Hmm. And she had a rental car. She was shocked to find out that we pumped our own gas. And she bitched the whole time as I showed her how to do it. Yeah, the typical Oregon Karen is not a new thing, says Dewey. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I, I that's, think that's a poor characterization of the girl who asked you for help c- rather kindly, I think. Yeah, but... she was embarrassed and she was young, kind. you said. Yeah. yeah, she was young. But I think I'd be surprised if you were in Oregon and you didn't know that that's how the, the rest of the world, I mean, the rest of the country works. I remember like four, uh, gosh, it must have been like 16 months ago now, but I was at Echoplex one night um, and I saw Oregon Karen play like the best gig mm. ever yeah yeah that, huh? they got a great synth section i think i heard the bootleg band. of that show yeah. and it was really good yeah andy sanchez last one he says matt fondelier do yourself a flavor oh. and give your tuna a little latin flair oh. try adding some cilantro some diced fresh jalapeno green onions by the way all three of those great saint patty's Day ingredients Oh, dice, for sure. Dice pickles as well. Because that's, that's so another one. Irish. Uh, but it, and, uh, and some of the juice. Put some of that pickle juice in there, too. Mix it up with some mayo, garlic powder, salt, and oh. pepper. And that's wow. what's on the and menu. That's, he just Damn. took it from me, dude. I'd rather eat his. Seriously. Wow. Damn. What did you do? You just, I like put some parsley and put some, mayo yeah. in it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Well, anyway, thanks, to everybody, for writing in in the Facebook group. We appreciate you doing that, and we just love reading it. It's fun. Yep. A lot of people, when they sign up, the question is, what's your favorite part of the show? Everyone loves the comments. Yeah. Usually we read some of the more interesting ones, but... What, which one did I skip? <laughs> I like to shake it up every now and then. Which one did I skip? I don't know. There was one about me being a genius like two weeks ago that you ignored. Are you <laughs> serious? Uh. I didn't even see that one. I swear. I would, I would read that one. Mm. Mm. What, it, was, how- it was emailed directly to you. Mm. <laughs> what? I'm kidding. I was don't it? Fuck. <laughs> yeah. Which one? I don't know. Oh. Chris, 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 Chris. Oh, Chris. oh, you're right. You're right. You're right. <laughs> I do Chris, remember this Chris. one. But the guy was just sucking up to you because he knows you're Chris, Gary Gatekeeper. Chris, and I'm fine Chris, with that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'll find it later. But let, anyway, we got a lot of show today. Let's get into some. Do you want flicking or shade? Let's do some flicking. Here we go. And that one. <laughs> good job, <Kaylin. laughs> All right, good job, buddy. Kaylin, amazing as right, always. That's wow. good. good enough. It's been a long day. <laughs> been a long day. It has been a long day. We all want to know what day. What day? Your opinions, what we need. We need. So, Kaylin, get on that mic, that mic and flick the bean. Oh, Kaylin, flick the bean. Respect all women. <laughs> Chris, where did you do the biggie voice? Today, I'm flicking a eight episode miniseries called Zero Zero Zero. Yes. Can't uh, believe they made a show out of my luggage tag. 
luggage lock. <laughs> Forget it. it, was, it was, I tried. Yeah, you missed it. They're not all home runs. Swing and miss. <laughs> I actually like that joke. It, just, it was a little bit of a grenade. It didn't really, it didn't really explode. If you yeah. said lock, maybe. Uh, <laughs> tag was a little tough. Yeah, <laughs> yeah luggage tag was hey, man, you had that one about single single line line homer. Come on. Yeah. Strikes uh, out on that pitch. Yeah. <laughs> no, I like that, though. That was funny. I don't need that. <laughs> <laughs> don't pity me. <laughs> so, as I said, it's eight episodes. Each episode is about an hour long, and it, they're all available now on Amazon Prime. Um, it's based on a 2013 book of the same name by Roberto Saviano, who was also the writer of Gamora. Gamora. Yeah. The book in 2006 and then supervi- supervised on the film and TV show. Stars uh, Andrea Risenborough, Risenborough, who is in Waco, Birdman, Black Mirror. Dane DeHaan, who is a really good young actor from a, uh, a, a, The Place Beyond the Pines. Kalen saying all the white people first. It's, yes. Um, Chronicle. I thought he was going to be a much bigger star by now. And uh, Gabriel Byrne, who is the lead in The Usual Suspects. Yep. Everyone else <laughs> in the show. Mm, you're not going to know him anyway. Uh, so this story takes place in three separate worlds. It's the <laughs> Italian mafia where Don Minu. Uh, three, three separate like locations. It's all in the same world. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah it's all on Earth. It's, oh, <laughs> so I was, dude, yeah, I was, he's, that, thank <laughs> you for clearing that yeah, up, Gary. Well, I I had different some, worlds of I was drug, like, oh, it's like Star Trek. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a Star Trek. Some of it's it happens Minu, in the Ewok yeah. village. <laughs> Are you um, sure it's not Don Menu? <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, he's like this old Don. He's getting old, and all the other factions are starting to, you know, pair up against him, align against him. So he buys five tons of cocaine to split amongst the Italians to kind of unite everybody again. Then there's the Mexican cartel world, which produces the five tons. That's stop a different, that's world. A different you, gotta, world. you gotta stop saying world, man. Because I'm like, <laughs> it's all happening on Earth at the same time. There's I want to live different mafia factions. world. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is the worst theme park ever, or best theme park ever, maybe. <laughs> mafia world. <laughs> Let's go to Mafia World. <laughs> and finally, the American Family World. There's <laughs> <laughs> a brother, sister, and father who traffic the large cargo uh, from Monterey, Mexico, to Italy. Okay, Kalen, okay. before you continue, yeah, Matt. Have, have you seen the show? No, but it sounds like a sci-fi epic for the <laughs> ages. <laughs> Which world would you want to live in? Let's see if let's see if you get it right, Kaylin. And not. remember, one of them you have, is America. <laughs> you, have, you have a choice between an Italian mafia world, uh-huh. Mexico cartel world, <laughs> yeah, sure. or American, or American family world. world. Yeah. Mm. Let me think about that. The food might be better in the Italian <laughs> worlds, but I'll probably stick with America. What do you think? A lot of fish. A lot of fish. You'd be surprised. Spoiler alert. The American world is only in America for about five minutes <laughs> before they're in the ocean world Ooh, for the whole right. show. Oh, like, yeah. Yeah, like Kayla, water world? Is Kevin Costner in there? There's part of an Africa totally, world in totally. there. Yeah, there's part world. of a Middle Eastern world part in there. Middle Eastern world in there, yeah. It's an epic. There's a lot of worlds. Wow. I really miss Westworld. <laughs> <laughs> there's New Orleans world. You'd probably want to be there. there it's yeah. the port. There actually yeah. is New Orleans world. For well, that's the American minutes. world we talked about. Yeah. Yeah. New uh, Orleans is in America for people listening. <laughs> it's we, France. Matt's like, we do know that. Please, please understand. We are aware of this. Well, maybe some of the listeners don't. Mm. You know? Yeah. True. Anyway, this show is fucking awesome. It feels like Gamora, so naturally I like it a lot. It is a bit slower. Italy world. But, uh. Kaylin, you usually do the budget. Did you happen to look that up? I did not look up the budget. It's like $160 million for eight episodes. It's a lot. That's a lot, right? Yeah, it, that's a lot. Yeah, it's wow. a great it's, looking show. It's beautifully shot. Uh, yeah, like I said, it is a bit slower than Gamora, but there's tons of action and a few pretty fucked up scenes in there, which is awesome. The pacing of the show is really unique. They do a a great kind of storytelling trick where um, to tell like everybody's story. Two characters will be in one place, then they'll kind of separate and meet up, and they'll kind of go back in time and follow the other character's arc in the same timeline. Tarantino. And it's really cool how they do that, and you don't really, you're not really expecting it, and then they do it, and uh, nothing feels fake about the show. It all feels like super real- realistic, which is awesome. Um, the acting is great, and the casting is awesome too. Don Minu is pretty fucking OG gangster, and it's great. And the Mexican cartel world leader is 
really, really badass. At first, you're like, this, I don't know about this guy. Don and- Manu lives in a fucking well in a fucking mountainside in so Italy. Seen, so you've seen the first episode? Um, no, I've seen the whole thing. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> Sorry. And, uh, it's awesome. That, that, that dude's role is like, and then you, you see yeah. these. That dude's a badass. Yeah. yeah. It, it's, it's really, really good, every aspect of the show. The only thing about the show, and I don't really know why, but I wasn't like super excited to watch the next episode. Like when you're like, oh, I have to see it, I have to see it. Like I could watch two episodes one day and then wait a few days and then watch another episode, wait a few days, watch two or three episodes. So I don't know. I guess it just didn't grab me in the same way that some shows do. But everything about the show is so awesome and uh, I highly recommend it. It is flickable. 9.1 9.1 out of 10. Wow. And right in line with the That's right, yes. J- tied with the birth of your of both of your daughters. Were they wow. both 9.1? Respectively. Well, it wasn't necessarily the they birth. would have had just, to have been. You know, <laughs> Again, <laughs> this is like a lesson rating. we're giving Chris. <laughs> yeah. Yes. The rating of his daughter. Yeah, Gary, we need you to like hold a seminar or so something, like, a little TED Talk. People Gary are talk. like, I'm You're thinking about having here. kids. <laughs> and then I'm you say, say well, dumb shit, Gary. have you seen 000? About the same. <laughs> I can see Gary for his uh, his Gary talk. He just walks up there with his headset, and he has a little a little graph here, a little a little chart. Like a, it's like all right. Now, if you look at this, if you have a dumb idea, you have a choice between saying it or don't say it. <laughs> don't say don't it. say it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You should hold, you should make a little little Gary talk. I think a lot of us could. could you know use how to use that. PowerPoint? <sighs> Sounds like a graph sure. that Jack Silver made back in the radio days. You know, I I, uh, I just like how dare you? I just good, started funny. <laughs> he wrote good and funny and like two other things in four corners. And oh my god, Mike Lynch still has the napkin he wrote it on. That's great. I'll 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 find it. I would love to see that. I'll find yeah. it. Yeah. Um, the uh, I was I just started watching The Sopranos. Just like I'm five episodes in. Nice. Just Welcome. beginning the journey. I'm loving it. So you were inspired by me and my wife. I was, actually, yeah. And uh, Matt had such a great journey. I did. It's it also like. a cultural phenomenon. Yeah, I know. And I, 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 I didn't have HBO at the time, so like, I, didn't, yeah, I didn't watch it. So, But, I mean, I've heard enough about it to where I understand like some of the pop, refer- pop culture references and things like that. But mm-hmm. I don't really know anything about the story. So yeah. it's really cool seeing it. And it's just, uh, man, James Gandolfini is a master. He's incredible. Just, like in five episodes, I'm like, yeah, he really – he. It's just insane watching. But uh, so Jen and I turn it on. We watch the first episode together. This is awesome. We're, we're thinking, let's watch another one. Like kind of like Kane. Like we gotta watch another one. We watch another one. Great. Then Jen turns to me and she's like, and she does the thing, Kaylin, where she goes, you know, we don't have any shows we watch together anymore. Could we watch this one together? And like, let's not like neither of us just skip ahead. And we every episode we have to watch together. And I go, okay. The claw. That's fine. Yeah. I mean, look, I, it, it's nice to do something together. And I know our schedules don't always exactly align, but I can wait. No problem. I won't. Uh, and then literally one day later, I'm driving home from work. I call Jen. She's already at home. Hey, Jen. <laughs> What's going on? What are you doing? Oh, I've watched like three episodes of Sopranos. It's <laughs> yeah. so good. It's oh. so good. <laughs> <laughs> Just ditched me. Wow. Just ditched me. I, in a day. So what are you going to do? Where, this is where Gary tells I'm you making... that these are things you don't share on a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> this is the part. I was just waiting for an opening. <laughs> <laughs> Chris, look at the chart. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, but now I'm, she's just rewatching with me. Like I'm like, okay, well, I'll just because I am going at a, lo- a much slower sort of pace because I've had shows over the weekend. I haven't really had time. So yeah, but here's the thing: now she knows what's going to happen, and she's not going to be as invested in it. Yeah. You guys are going to watch it, and she's going to be on her phone. I know you listen to this, Jen. Don't tell me <laughs> that you don't think you're going to be on your phone. For Jen, certain has, segments of these episodes. Jen has crossed onto another wire of another alternate reality where she knows what's happening in The Sopranos. Where you're still on that reality where you don't know what's happening and had you two not met that convergence life could be different you're well, li- now living an alternate reality what if my body just exploded at the end yeah. of that sentence would <laughs> that freak you out matt uh, absolutely yeah, yeah. <laughs> actually yes <laughs> okay it's making sure if your body exploded what are <laughs> yeah, we talking Dawson about just figure something out with the universe <laughs> and it just it just imploded yeah. on itself. he uh, unlocked something it's a great sci-fi movie uh we were talking about earlier zero 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 no, no. <laughs> does it <laughs> does, does count it 
he's back, folks. <laughs> Does zero, do they explain the title of that, Kalen? No. No, they don't. No. Yeah. They don't. Yeah. <laughs> I would I would they I was just going to say I want to watch it just so I can figure out why it's called Maybe that. Maybe they did at some point, but I I, I missed it. Hmm. It's got to be some inside thing. It it certainly has to mean something. It has to have some kind of meaning. Yeah. Like the the I don't know, the the end of the countdown for all three of these parts. Yeah. Or worlds. Worlds. Well, that that that's gonna bother me. All right. Yeah. Well, let's uh, let's get going. Matt went on a nice little trip to San Diego, and I want to hear all about it in today. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh yeah, okay. Doss. Let's let's not accept it. <laughs> Here we go. Yeah, we're good. Oh, no! What type of foods might we hear of today? What might be the price? What might be the venue? So let's find out. It's time for Gary to say, hey, Matt. It's on the menu. Well, this past weekend, my wife and I celebrated our five-year wedding anniversary. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. So we decided to go on a little trip. We went, we went down to uh, San Diego. And uh, pretty much all we did was uh, walk around and go to different restaurants and eat and drink to our heart's content. So I got shades for days. What? Shades <laughs> for days, It's going to be Brace. the first. Get me a shirt that says that, please. Of a multi-part <laughs> series. I don't know how many parts yet. Definitely going to be more than three. Mm. Oh. Maybe well, three. This, Maybe do we, three. this is an actual competitor yeah. to Mammoth. So you're going to have right. to subscribe. At patreon.com slash watercolor to right. hear all three parts. That is correct. Yeah, because part three won't make sense unless, unless you've heard <laughs> <Right>. part two. <laughs> right. I'll probably bounce around a little bit as well. Just okay. Because, but you know, you, why uh, did you choose San Diego? It's like I watched Caddyshack 2 the other day, and man, if I hadn't watched Caddyshack 1, I'd have lost. no idea what the yeah. fuck was going on. Yeah. Uh, we decided San Diego because it's not crazy far. It's just a very short getaway. Leave Friday morning, be back by Sunday. Yeah. Um, and it's a place that I know... Fairly well. My wife has not been there in a really, really long time. So I had places that I was excited to go back to and new places to try, and it was all going to be new for her. So I, I always tell people who aren't really from California, don't know California very much, like when they think, oh, I want to check out LA. And I think, no. What you, you know. think LA is, San Diego is, as far as just the beach and the perfect yeah. weather and, and just how cool it is. L.A. isn't like that, as picture, as picture perfect as Hollywood make make it seem. It's actually San Diego's paradise. San Diego's living the dream. Yeah, it's really awesome down there. Um, so one of the one of my favorite places that I've been to in San Diego was a tiki bar that I went to with some friends for a bachelor party, and this is a place that's in sort of the back of another restaurant. So you have to kind of know that it's there. Is it a is it a speakeasy tiki? It, I think they probably would like to be that, but the truth is you can clearly see the, like, door to the place. Like, it's not a total – you wouldn't be totally shocked. There's, like, a giant, like, cave of light-up skeletons and stuff in the archway there. It doesn't really feel like the rest of the restaurant. And what happens when you when you pass through the door? Mm. You're transported <laughs> to another place. Thank wow. you for that setup, Chris. Um, so th- I think this was the place that was sort of – what started my love of tiki bars and tiki style cocktails the when I went there for this bachelor party. What neighborhood was this in? It's called Little Italy. Okay, downtown. Yeah, just Out, outside, just outside of downtown. Of downtown. Yeah, okay. exactly. So there's a is, great, there's a killer Italian. So you went to Italian Mafia Italy? World? I went Little to- Italy. You wouldn't believe it, dude. You'd expect it to be in Koreatown. Yeah. But I swear to God, Little Italy. Wow. Yeah, Mafia World, like yeah. I said. Um, so this place, though, I mean, we're still in Corona times, so I didn't know if this place was going to be open. Was that Beer 30? Yeah. The A lot of these places are closing down at 10 o'clock, and frankly, we have a dinner reservation at 8. There's no way we're going to get into this bar. So we have to go before we go to dinner, and it's basically across the street from where we're going to go to dinner. Pre-game. That's right. We're going to pre-game it. I walk up to the hostess and say – yeah, it's our fifth anniversary. Oh, and drop that. We were hoping to get into the uh, the speaky or the tiki bar either like right now or tomorrow around this time because we're going to be here tomorrow too. It's that's that's your opening line, or do you do you work it into the conversation after you've like spoken to her? For hey, a how bit? are you? I like the blouse. No, nope, yeah. do any of that. Hi, it's, it's our right fifth anniversary. Awesome. Yeah. When your wife's standing like right there on your yeah. anniversary, you shouldn't hit on the hostess. Gary <laughs> <laughs> <Scary> talks. <laughs> yeah. So this is – I'm talking to the hostess of the main restaurant. 
because I'm assuming now, the that she's with the Mosdus. I'm assuming she's the gatekeeper for the tiki bar as well. Maybe and she, master. she's kind of annoyed with how direct I was being about wanting to get <laughs> That's it. That's why you got to work it in. Yeah, yeah, yeah I clearly you made a mistake. Need the dough. So and how's it going? So Are she you said, single? She said, <laughs> she said, well, it's a three-hour wait, and we close in three hours. So I don't, so think, fuck off. I don't think you're going to get in. And hey, I, pet a goat, eat a corn dog, <laughs> fuck off. Yeah, yeah that's basically. And that's I said, new. well, we're going to be here tomorrow as well. What time do I need to get here? Where it won't be a three hour wait because the bar opens at like five o'clock. I don't know how the hell I'm supposed to be there any earlier. Yeah, bitch. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> Respect all Oh my God. <laughs> Good Lord. So she seems no more little... pineapple. Once claws. again, your <laughs> wife <laughs> is standing right there and it's your fifth anniversary, Dawson. What the fuck? It's right on the chart. Yeah. <laughs> she was clearly a little bit flustered and she said, just go talk to, go talk to her. She'll help you out. And I get moved to the hostess who's standing in front of the tiki bar. There's a second hostess. Oh. And I say to her, hey, it's our five-year anniversary. Hey, bitch. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Might as well. Nice blouse. <laughs> I definitely did not see any of that. <laughs> Is your sister hot? <laughs> I like this version of Matt, actually. Just, like, <laughs> just say what I feel. 1940s Matt. Yeah. I go to the second hostess, and I say, it's our five-year anniversary. We'd love to get a drink either right now or this time tomorrow. And she says, well, it's really busy right now, but I'll tell you what. I'm going to bring you guys in right now. I call this the Sneaky Tiki. Ooh! Oh! And... This place was exactly as I remembered it. It is – it basically looks like Pirates of the Caribbean, like Disneyland level of detail. And you walk through this giant cave with like light-up skeletons like coming like you know dead bodies. Not like in the necessarily a scary way but more okay. like a Pirates of the Caribbean kind of way. Yeah. And when you get into this place, it's a low ceiling but there's beautiful lanterns everywhere and tiki boards and the cocktail menu – no joke has thirty unique representations cocktails. of rape. Jesus Christ, Mike. dude! What are you <laughs> talking about? The Caribbean. I was oh. in the Caribbean. Oh, okay, that, I get yeah. that. I get that. <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> More non sequitur than the burrito. <laughs> yeah. Every once in a while, they do like a, a fake rainstorm with like thunder and lightning, and the lights flicker, and there's water features everywhere. And again, they have like thirty different cocktails because they have the traditional tiki cocktails and then their version of that cocktail. So there might be one that's traditionally made with mm -hmm. rum and certain yeah. flavor of syrup and they'll do that drink but it's made with mezcal it's and their something else. They have their flair yeah. to it. Yeah. Their signature on it. Now I was obsessed with this one drink that I got at this bachelor party but I could not remember the name of it. Oh. But I remember that You weren't that obsessed That's unusual for you. You didn't well, get the zombie, did you? It was not the zombie. Okay. Painkiller. I, I don't I you, wasn't you the one like who I wasn't guy. the one who ordered it. It was ordered like for the group by the, you know, whoever was supposed to pay for that round at the bachelor party. Can you describe it? Well, I tried to describe it to the waitress. I figured she would know and I I said the flavors that I remember was it had like passion fruit and like a coffee flavor, mm. hmm. which was really like an interesting combination. And she could not figure out which of these has coffee flavor. None right. of the drinks really have coffee. The only one that does is like a banana one. It was definitely not that. Then I remember at the very last second that it was a drink that had an accompanying shot mm. that you then can pour – Oh. into the rest of your cocktail because we were all so crazy drunk at this bachelor party and I was handed two drinks and it was I mean it was a wild night I finally found it it's called the Demerara Dry Float mm. which is apparently like a pretty well known tiki cocktail the Demerara Dry Float Demerara. that coffee flavor comes from a very specific kind of rum yeah Demerara Oh, um, Dom Herrera just had a show Dom at Herrera, LA, actually, right. the other day. Yeah. He's, got, he's got some good jokes. Did anyone else pack your bags? Well, now that you mention it. You know, it's, it's that whole airport <laughs> thing. <laughs> I like Dom Herrera. Yeah. Well, he I'm makes gonna a hell of a drink. Yeah, yeah. Hell of a yeah. dry float. <laughs> um, it was just very satisfying to actually pick out the drink that I wanted to have. Because that was one of the main reasons that I wanted to go to this place was to, like, 
rediscover this drink again. What a what a clutch it really time was. for yeah that to that to kind of click in your brain and figure out what it was and was yep. it as good as you remembered it? It really was. Like I I was I had such a big smile on my face. I was just so happy that it tasted exactly how I remembered. And it it is just that rum that it, it's used with that has that sort of coffee kind of flavor to it. But anyway, it was fucking delicious. I'm going to order that at the next Tiki bar I go to. Yeah, I don't know if it tastes great at other <laughs> so this place places. Is like you think, of, I, like you think I go to shitty Tiki almost. bars, Matt? It kind of is like an amusement yeah. park. Like I, That's what I meant, like a Disneyland level of yeah. detail. What did you say, Chris? You think I just go to shitty Tiki bars? Well, that's true. Most Tiki bars are pretty awesome. Yeah. yeah I don't know, I'll man. have a Dom Arrera drive <laughs> yeah. 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 Dr- yeah. Dom Arrera Don't drive, drive back. <laughs> All right. So I'm not going to do the entire dinner because Thank you. it's already running real long. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> but I do want to say a couple things about where we went. Is another place in that little Italy mafia world area. It's called Ironside. <laughs> and another the Italian restaurant. just the, the quality. Like, I found it was actually run by the same restaurant group. And – it looked completely different than this other place, but it looked like you were kind of in the undercarriage of a ship with like lug- luggage racks, and it was really, really cool. I'm, I'm not doing it justice. One of the items that they have on their menu that we did not have is called the holy shit. Holy shit, four hundred and twenty dollars. Wait, they had a they have a dish called the holy shit. Yes, it's called holy shit. You can't name a dish the holy shit. I would never order two ounces. Of caviar. Oh, I mean, yeah. <laughs> 24 oysters, 12 shrimp, rockfish ceviche, shrimp aguachile, which I don't know what that is, two pounds of lobster, and bread. I'm oh, sure yeah, that's where the $400 comes in. The bread? The bread, the bread. Yeah. Definitely that's where they the get bread. you. Um, but I had one of the most delicious you dishes. Did you get the holy shit? Oh, no, we did not. It was way too expensive. You got the holy crap. <laughs> we got something called. Bone marrow Oscar. Oh, Jesus. You guys ever had bone marrow before? I love bone marrow. Chris, I'm sure you do. Obviously, you do. You're the only one here who could possibly be the one to like it. Kaylin, you never had it? You would like it. It's rich. You just get it out of the goddamn bone. No, but this one is a big old bone, and you it's it's like a spread. (laughs) That drop. You know The, 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 speaking of the Sopranos, <laughs> speaking of the Sopranos, there is a scene that you will get to where Janice and Tony are having a dinner together, and Janice is sucking the marrow out of a bone. Yeah, and I guess Doss, too. I've, I, I know. So, yes, Doss, I know the difference. Poor people I've, eat bone marrow. Too. No, I, look, I right love there. bone. Marrow. I've had many kinds of bone marrow. I've sucked bone marrow and I've scooped bone marrow. Oh, <laughs> All right, Doss. Okay. Like it, you know, it's right. two. It's it's different experiences. I've gotten at it with a fork. There, there hasn't been one a bone knife. that I haven't tried to get the marrow out of. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> at this point, it's self-explanatory, right? Yeah. Okay, I go for it. Teeth. If it's edible, teeth I, and I'll nails, eat it. bro. You got teeth and nails after that shit. Yeah. All right. So here's the deal. When you go to a nice restaurant, Dawson, oh, no. they slice the bone for you, right? They give okay. you. I'm, I'm showing you guys a picture on my phone. Oh they shit! They take it's a right gigantic. <laughs> yeah, wow. that's right. Yeah, he's doing the video it's feed. Right there. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> wow. uh, uh, it's fun to make your friends work. When you do it on Patreon, I get pissed. <laughs> <laughs> Well, they take like a gigantic, I don't know which bone it is, but it is sliced in half and the bone marrow is basically cooked down to what would basically be like butter. Mm. And at this particular place. You bread that shit, bro? Oh, yeah. Dip some sourdough into it? Yes. Well, this place, they take that bone marrow, they cook it down like butter. They add lobster, asparagus, pickled shallots, Bernays sauce, and then... They placed them on these pieces of like homemade brioche bread, and you basically kind of scooped it out like you would again butter and spread it on the bread. And it was no joke, one of the best bites of food food experiences I've ever had. It was absolutely incredible. Yeah, I, I, I I'm happy that that it was for you. I worry that it's a little too much of good stuff with lobster bone marrow. Well, here's the thing: the lobster was. Like a very small piece, kind of scattered throughout it. It wasn't like I'll show you a picture of it too. If you want to put that back up on the feet a second time, I'll show too you much. I can show you a different <laughs> picture. I'll show it to you from a different angle. No. Yeah. So, so that's two me. different pictures. No, the one that's right. There. See that? You see that? 
It wow. really was yeah. no uh, no thicker than spreading butter onto your bread. So all those items I listed were all clearly part of the dish, but it wasn't like any one of those things overpowered it. Yeah. Anyway, it That's was great. absolutely amazing. A great first night, although just a couple of many, many stops we made. So I will continue to detail it on future episodes of Chez Fondelay, including the next episode of Patreon. But until then, that's what's on the menu. Yes. Ooh. Well done, dude. No, Matt, I have a, an I'll important... I'll eat the shit out of that, bro. Yeah. Matt. I have an important question to ask real fast. Sorry, yeah. Chris. After this was all done and you were finished with dinner, did you get a little freaky tiki? <laughs> mm. <laughs> it was my anniversary. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's a yes. Yeah. yeah. Oh, and since and you Chris, brought it up, I should that's also... That's how you do it. Yeah, that was good. That it's was my anniversary. Good. Yeah, that's nice. By the way, at our hotel, the next door neighbors were getting it on so freaking loud. I've never stayed at a hotel. Speaking of your hotel, go ahead. That I that for it felt like an hour. You could just literally hear the next door neighbors banging. It was crazy. Did you wow. have the Did you have the badass fucking sprawling landscape of a big pool, lots of palm trees, and a really cool hotel to hang out at? That's right. You're in Mission Bay. No. I was in San Diego. I'm in the gas lamp district. <laughs> It wasn't Mission Your Bay. hotel did not... Okay, then it, then was, it, was, it wasn't wait, the place Dawson, that you and you I were talking about. Everything you described was what was at you my You had hotel. that downtown? Yes. Mike. There were beautiful know. palm trees oh. everywhere. What, was, what were your... Now, did you sprawling yes. was the word I was speaking of. Chris, sprawling, like hotel. acreage. Yeah. Would you say it's sprawling? It's sprawling. Mike, yeah. were you... Did you just attempt to figure out what hotel Matt was staying at based on... His view? Matt and I had discussed <laughs> this trip. Oh, okay. I didn't know that. <laughs> earlier. Tell me my view. Palm and, trees? Yeah. Oh, you were this one. And I had told Matt, he had told me the hotel he was staying in, and I had told Matt that uh, when we did the Corolla show from the radio uh, at the water park in San Diego or whatever, the Hurricanes or whatever the place was. Hurricane Harbor. No, it's not. SeaWorld. Whatever we did. It wasn't SeaWorld. Whatever the fuck it was. Um, we stayed at uh, one of those major hotel chains in Mission Bay. It's a Hilton. And there was a sprawling grounds. I mean, fucking acreage and palm trees and like, you see two water? pools. And- yeah, it's on you can see place. water? Well, if you were up in the, yeah. If yeah, you got I mean, to the top, you could see water? It, from the from my room, I could see water. Dude, you're at SeaWorld. <laughs> Forget it. <laughs> Different hotel, Matt. All right. When well, I say sprawling, yeah. No, please finish. I don't think I don't think the acreage that they had in Mission Bay gotcha. is the acreage that they have downtown. But you did have na- neighbors that were getting freaky tiki. But they you were did definitely yeah. getting freaky tiki. Yes. And I'm not. I'm sure it was awesome. That was a great trip. Yeah, I was. Yeah, I was just wondering if you were in the same place where I was. I thought maybe when you said pool and palm trees, but... Now, Matt, did you use the water cooler life hack and get a refrigerator? That is a great question. Not only did I not need to get the refrigerator <laughs> because it was already in the room. Ooh! Oh. I did ask for it, yes. Nice. So you were in Mission Bay. <laughs> <laughs> but I did ask for the bathrobes. I got the bathrobes. Ooh. No, uh... No rope though to tie the bathrobes. They well, just gave us just two robes without the, the pull string, which I not pull string, oh. whatever the fuck it's called, the rope. Well, then you had no rope. choice to get freaky tiki. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Yeah. yeah, it was great. It was a great time. I'm glad, man. Did you yep. do some robe life? Oh, there was a lot of robe life. Good robe life. Yeah, robe <laughs> life. All about the robe life. Matt, I'm really impressed that you enjoy bone marrow. Thank you. While simultaneously insisting that matzo ball and miso soup be part <laughs> of the bracket. Uh-huh. It's just that uh, you, you got range, and I'm impressed. Well, thank you. I'll take yeah. that as a compliment. Yes. Yeah, of course. All right. It seems like a compliment, but I'll take it No, as a it's not. It's not. Um, I can't wait to hear about the rest of the trip in the next five, six episodes. That's over, right. over the next five or six Shays episodes. Shays for days. Shays for days. It's time. I can't wait. All right. Let's get our plugs in and get the F out of here. Kalen, what's up with you? Don't worry about me. All right, man. Every time I think... He's going to do something, and then he doesn't. Gary, we're going to go for you. Uh, check out Reasonable Doubt. We're going to be releasing some bonus episodes. Um, Mark's really excited about a trial that's going on right now. So. Bonus. 
There's going to be some bonus con- bonus, bonus content. Bonus content. Coming bonus content. Gary, you have to for one of your reasonable doubt call it bonus content. <laughs> I, I'm really not sure yeah. I can do that. Mark's pretty obsessed with the numbers. Yeah, no, can, okay. you, can you at least just drop one habeas brobus? I'll, I'll figure something out, but I'm or, not titling the episode bonus content or, or bro you brono. Know. You're going to be a part of these bonus episodes if I'm not no, mistaken. No, smart Matt, bonus Matt, episodes. Yes, you, I will be. Smart people them. listen to that show. Well, when you are featured in those episodes consider calling yourself gary ghost gary ghost and you guys can do gary ghost and gary ghost <laughs> that would be incredible <laughs> that would be that you, would have, be you have to be the one to plant that seed because that's the only way that it will ever happen yeah. i gotta be honest it's a tough putt but i Never like what you're happened. thinking gary ghost and gary ghost yeah I oh like my it. gosh can you imagine if somebody hired gary ghost and gary ghost and they got gary ghost and gary ghost because they <laughs> gary oh. shows up. Gary Ghost and Gary Ghost. Guys, oh, now we're talking. Yeah. It's good shit. That's incredible. I love it. Yeah, you got to make that happen. I'll do my best. He's aware of Gary Ghost's existence. He is. He actually wanted one of the sweaters you gave me for Christmas. See? So he's yeah, already yeah. a fan. He's ready to go. But yeah. He's got a great sense of humor. He's already there. To the page, I'm yeah. just saying, just invite him to be partner. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, just invite him. All right, Matt, where could it go for you? Well, I've got some exciting news, which is the latest Sword and Scale episode is one that I wrote and produced. Nice. Yeah. So uh, if you want to check it out, it's episode 183. I think it's got a hell of a twist in it. I worked really hard on it. So if you want to check it out, it's free. You know, it's like an hour and 10 minutes. And it's not it's not that scary. There is yeah. a vicious murder in it. But I promise you, Chris, that even you could handle it. It's not that scary. OK. Yeah. I'll listen to it. There. I got some crazy audio. Really? Really? I don't like. I don't like your eyes. <laughs> I don't like what your eyes did. Chris is going to need you to email him the script so we can read the Wikipedia. <laughs> yeah, of it. I should email you the script. This has got to be close to turning into something for you. Yeah, I hope so. That would be nice. Yeah, Matt, Keep it Matt up. works really hard Keep on it this up. stuff. Yep. Like it's, it's really impressive what he, um, how he puts this all together. Yeah, sort and scale. You're, you're doing the hours. You're doing the time, and you get the you, you're getting the payoff that you get it played. Yeah, I that, agree. That means feels good. Just, Keep going, dude. Keep going. Keep You're going, right. and and go even harder. You're right. Yeah. All right. And isn't isn't 183? Doesn't that mean something? No. Is that I love you? 187 does. Oh, okay. One of them means I love you, right? Yeah. 187 means murder. Yeah. Murders. Oh no, murder's yeah. that one. You're yeah. down with the 187. I forget what 183 means. Anyway, 134. Yeah. Three, three, Maybe it's 134. Four, Maybe yeah. That might be it. Something like that. Yeah, whatever code. You know, the cops don't when they want to say they love each yeah. other. <laughs> <laughs> Just want to say it before we log off here. Right. One, three, uh, we have a 145. Uh, <laughs> I 145 you too, bro. It's the number of creative ambition, achievement, and success. What is? 183. Well, which ones One. I love you? <laughs> I actually think that this lines up with Dawson saying, keep going, keep grinding. This is going to be something that all works, but sure, I love you. All right. And uh, Doss, where do you go for you? Uh, yesterday, not yesterday, two days ago on Saturday, I got to hang out with my friend Richard Stanley and his family. Mm. And uh, they all came over and, and uh, we had some margaritas and talked a lot and laughed and had a great time. And it's really fucking weird how like halfway through the day of hanging out, you get that thing in the back of your head that goes... This guy robbed 13 banks and did eight years in prison. And he's the greatest dude in the world. And he's at my house with his family. Mm -hmm. It's really weird. Yeah. So I went through that surreal moment. So I want to plug Richard Stanley's uh, books. Uh, You can buy the books. I do the audio books if you don't read. But both of the books are called Up on Game. The first one is how as a teenager, he robbed 13 (laughs) banks and got away with it until he didn't. Uh, and then the second uh, book is Until he how he became the fucking shot caller of his prison gang and how he changed shit around for the good of humanity in jail. And a uh, dude turned his life around and he's, he's one of my favorite and best friends in the world. Richard Stanley fucking rules. Yeah. Uh, look, look for the up on game novels. All right. I agree. I mean, the guy, I, I've met him many times. Good dude. Yeah. I like him. It's fun to be around too. All right, and uh, as for me, uh, check out Nate Bargatze's newest Netflix special. If you have yeah, some, that was you good. Know, I that thought was really it was good. very funny. 
I agree. Yeah. I too. So, uh, yeah, if you guys feel like laughing, I had a great time watching it, and uh, I would like to suggest that on our audiences. All right. That will do it for The Water Cooler. Thank you so much again for tuning in and being a part of the show. We'll be back uh, for a Patreon later this week, so make sure to tune in. 183. <laughs> <laughs>